Hello there, my name is Ben and welcome to my workshop. I don't know if I've ever filmed inside here before, but uh, I'm about to start a guitar renovation and I thought I'd share it with you. I thought I'd share the process with you as well, because it's, I think it's a really interesting process. I don't know how good I am at it, but uh, we're going to see. So I've been looking for a guitar to use in my upcoming Quiet One album, my record, my next record. And up until now I've been using a Jaguar Custom Shop HH and a customised Custom Shop strap as well from Fender, um, which I'll show you in a minute. And uh, both are amazing guitars. My wife bought me the HH and had it inscribed. It means a lot to me. Um, so does the other one. But I wanted something that uh, kind of took me back to my roots with guitar. And um, that's where I landed on this. Now this is a Watkins 44 Rapier, serial number 0001. This is the first Watkins Rapier. Now this guitar is kind of everything to the UK's electric guitar scene. The Watkins 22 was my first ever guitar, um, electric guitar. I remember my dad took me up to London to Denmark Street, Tim Pan Alley, it's referred to as. And we went into this custom kind of relic shop with all these amazing guitars like Gresh and Fender and uh, Gibsons, ugh. but you know, it has loads of stuff in it. And I mean, these are, some of these guitars have price tags of like 50, 60 grand on them, so obviously that wasn't gonna work. But uh, this, or well not this actually, the Rapier 22, was behind the guy's desk, the shop owner's desk plugged into a Fender Twin, which I use to this day, which makes you think maybe all this is psychological, but uh, plugged into an original Fender Twin. And it sounded incredible. It's got this kind of warm jangle. It's that Buddy Holly kind of pre-Beatles jangle. Um, this was referred to as the UK's version of the Strat, basically. It's um, a very different guitar, but it was uh, kind of as popular as the Strat when it came out, or at least the 22 was, the 44 wasn't popular. This was kind of the high end of Watkins guitars, but it wasn't the highest end guitar, if you know what I mean. It was just, it just happened to be the highest end of that certain manufacturer's guitars. I think it cost something like 35 pounds back in 1950, which doesn't sound like a lot, but I think back then it cost quite a bit. And uh, has a trem bar, has this kind of split tone, pickup system which I absolutely love although the actual system selector isn't working right now so something I'm going to need to fix. It does have some damage which I'll show you in some close-ups now but uh, other than that it's uh, it's going to be a really cool and interesting repair. I'm still not sure exactly how I'm going to colour it or what I'm going to colour it but uh, I want to make this the ultimate Rapier 44 and I have a lot of people waiting to get their hands on this to do some mech for it, some mechanics for it. Because this is it. This is, fortunately, unfortunately, Charlie Watkins died, who is the guy who invented this guitar. And Charlie Watkins invented um, the WEM, which is a tape machine, uh, tape delay machine, which is really popular in certain studios now. It was a huge pioneer of PA systems and uh, an entire line, not just the Rapiers, but had a line of electric guitars as well. And he died a couple of years ago in 2014, which is a shame. Because I never got to talk to him, and these were always like my, my favourite guitars, and I always wanted to meet him, and um, it's one of those things that never happened. So I hope I can do him proud and restore this to some sort of beauty. So that's the project. To give you an example of what I've done in the past, and this is a terrible example of something I did in the past, this is what I refer to as the Bender Ubercaster, literally referred to as the Bender. Ubercaster. This is a custom shop Fender. Think of that. Um, that one weekend I decided to absolutely molest, and this is what came out. I promise I will not do this to this incredible guitar. This one suffered in my hand, and I don't even know what was wrong with me. Look at that. I mean, what the fuck's going on there? But it's got like a pearlescent gold finish. I don't know if you can see it on camera. But it has like a pearlescent gold finish around the sides. Um, has a cow here. Uh, 
uh, there's a sun with an additional sticker sun in the middle of the sun. And instead of fret markers, it has stickers on the side that have been varnished on. Um, it does have all the original Fender stuff, so the custom shop uh, machine heads, has custom shop bridge, has uh, two custom shop noiseless pickups. I'm not going to be touching the, uh, these are called toaster pickups actually on the rapier. These are called toaster pickups. Now, this is the earlier model, this is like the original, the first one. So they had something called toaster pickups, which is slightly different to uh, the later 1964 onwards pickups. And um, this guitar, something I'm going to talk about, and I normally talk about it with acoustics. This guitar still thinks it's a tree. Um, it's a really weird thing to say, but this guitar moves a lot. Now I've had the rapier here for a couple of days and it holds tuning incredibly. That no longer thing, that piece of wood down there no longer thinks it's a tree. This one is still unsure as to whether to behave and be a guitar or to grow and be a tree. So heat wise it's really temperamental and I find strats can be, like new strats especially can be, but um, that guitar, it, that tree is long dead. So uh, I can't wait, I really can't wait to uh, to do something with it. If I give you an example of what I'm going to change, so I swap guitars. Um, so the head's really bare, I don't know if you can see the head here. Maybe, maybe you've already done this in close-ups actually, but the head's really bare. Um, that's how they all were. So I'm going to paint the head, the head's going to be painted the same colour as the body and I don't think I'm going to keep it red, although that was traditional. Um, it's this kind of odd, sickly orangey red, which is really, it's just a strange colour to pick. Um, and then the, the back of the neck will be painted the same colour I assume. So then uh, the head, the headstock and neck will all be repainted. I've got new machine heads coming in. I um, can't remember what they're called, but I'll show you them when they're here, I'll show you fitting them as well. Having the neck completely redone, there's no truss in this, which is interesting. No truss, too early, didn't even exist at that point. Uh, truss rod. Uh, having some frets completely refretted, uh, re-necked, not re-necked, the same neck, but I'm having the fretboard re-skimmed and then new frets put in. Because um, I like quite a low action. These are pretty low but they're not stable, these haven't been changed, these may even be the original frets looking at them, so... Other than that, I think everything else is in pretty good working order. I plugged it in, it sounds amazing, maybe I can show you some of that before I dismantle it. There are, however, some unfortunate issues with the paintwork, this really big chunk literally missing out. Um, here, there's some paint marks around here, I'll do some close up so you can see, but there's some marks missing here, and... Um, there are some paint issues as well, just general paint things. What is this, like 52 years old, something like that? I don't know, I haven't done the maths, but it's pretty old. And uh, it's going to have a lot of wear and tear, but I want to completely take this back to the glory of the Rapier 44 and to make it something a bit special along the way. So hopefully these videos won't bore you, but the next one will be me dismantling this guitar. Thanks.